Greetings to believers whose hope is in heaven and eternal life. It is great to see you. I am theology instructor Gi Chol Hong. Today, the word of God we will be looking at is introductory lesson 11, the figurative of light and darkness. What we are learning today is not regarding the light and darkness of the natural world. Rather, this is a time to understand the meaning of spiritual light and spiritual darkness, which God spoke about figuratively in the Bible, by using the concept of physical light and darkness in the natural world. Through this time today, I pray in the name of the Lord that you may understand the true meaning of spiritual light and darkness and are reborn with this light and become the children of light to receive all the blessings in heaven that are promised. First, let's read our main passage today, John chapter 1, verse 1 to 5. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through Him all things were made. Without Him nothing was made that has been made. In Him was life, and that life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, but the darkness has not understood it. Yes, that's right. God says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. It says that the Word is God, correct? And before that, it says that the Word was with God. So this means, wherever God is, the Word is. They always go hand in hand. In verse 3, it says that God created all things with the Word. In verse 4, it says that there is life in the Word, and the Word of life is like light to men. Therefore, the Word is God, the Word is life, and this Word is also the light of men. And God says in verse 5, The light shines in the darkness, but the darkness has not understood it. Believers. When physical light shines in darkness, does the physical darkness have ability to either understand or not understand? When physical light shines in darkness, the darkness either becomes bright or it just remains as dark without light, correct? But Jesus gave us these words saying, the light shines in the darkness, but the darkness has not understood it. Through the verses that we read, we can see that the verses are not regarding physical light and darkness, but Jesus is figuratively using physical light and darkness as parables to speak regarding spiritual light and spiritual darkness. Through this time today, I hope we can all understand the true reality of the spiritual light and spiritual darkness that Jesus spoke of. And let us examine how important the word is for the believers who have hopes to attain heaven. Now. Let us learn the true reality of spiritual light and spiritual darkness. The true meaning of this light is God and God's word of life. God says that the light is God and the word of life. Then, what is the meaning of darkness? The darkness is the state of being with no light, correct? If God and his word of life are light, then what is the darkness? The true meaning of the darkness is referring to the state of being in ignorance of God and His Word. If this is so, why does God refer to God and the Word of Life as the light, and why does He refer to not knowing God and the Word of Life as the darkness? I will explain step by step using the words of the Bible. First, let us examine the figurative light and darkness. Figurative language and parables explain something by comparing it with something else that shares similar characteristics. In the same way, God conveys His will and purpose to us. He tells us His will and purpose and the spiritual aspects by using the characteristics of physical light and darkness. If we can understand the characteristics of the physical light and darkness, we will be able to know the will and purpose that He wants to convey to us, right? So let us first learn about the characteristics of physical light and darkness. 
Light is the origin of life for all creation. No man, animal or plant can live without light. Light also has the characteristic of producing illumination in darkness. In the darkness of night, we cannot see the road before us, nor can we tell objects apart. Therefore, light is the origin of all creation, and it has the characteristic of revealing things. By contrast, what is darkness? Darkness is the state of being without light. As such, we cannot see anything without light, and darkness is the state of being without light. If we understand the physical characteristics of light, shouldn't we easily be able to understand what darkness means? So now, let us discover, through the Bible, the meaning of spiritual light and darkness. If we know what spiritual light is, then wouldn't it be easy for us to know what darkness means because darkness is the absence of light? We will take a look at the true spiritual meaning of light. According to our main passage today, John 1 verse 1 to 5, it says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. God says that the Word is God. The reason is that according to John 4 verse 24, it says that God is Spirit, which we cannot see. And God, who is Spirit, in order to give us His Word, which includes His thoughts and will, God speaks through the shepherds and prophets whom He chose. And the shepherds and the chosen prophets have recorded God's will and thoughts from the book of Genesis to the book of Revelation, 66 books of the Bible. So, the 66 books of the Bible are not like the books in the world, but the word of life, containing God's heart, thoughts, and His will, which give life to His people. If this is true, how should people who believe in God live? Shouldn't we take the word as God's heart, will, and voice? Therefore, to us, the word is equivalent to God. So isn't it fair to say that a true life of faith is centered on the word of God? So, the life of faith that is centered on the word is a true believer of God. However, Throwing away the word is like leaving and throwing away God. The reason is because the word is God, and God walks alongside a person with the word. Furthermore, verse 4 tells us that there is life in the word. Therefore, in God's word, there is life, so life is in people. In the same way as our physical body needs light and must eat food, water and breathe air to live, we need to have God's word in order to retain spiritual life because the word is equivalent to life for the believers who seek heaven. Then, we must obtain the word in order to retain life and those who do not obtain God's word will have no life. God clearly says that the word is God and there is life in the word. That is why God refers to the word of life as the light in men. Can people live without light? We cannot, correct? Without light, men, animals, plants and all of creation cannot retain life. God refers to the word of life as light because people cannot live without light. Likewise, God's word of life is life to believers who seek heaven. Therefore, what God is clearly telling us is that the Word is God, and the Word is light. So then the Word becomes the life in men. So, the figurative light is that God's Word of life, which becomes light in men, then we must remember that gaining the word is like gaining the life from God and leaving or throwing away the word is like leaving and throwing away God and life.
It also says in Psalms 119 verse 105, Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light for my path. Likewise, we can understand that God's word is like the light of life that guides us to heaven. God also figuratively tells us through Luke 8.11 that God's word is the seed. People cannot exist without seed. The seed is the beginning and the origin of life for all creation, and God is spirit, and his word is seed. Then, what do we need to do in order to become the offspring of God? That is right, we need to be born again of God's word. According to the words in 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 23, one can only be truly reborn from imperishable seed, which is God's word, not from perishable seed. Therefore, being truly reborn means for one's inner self to be reborn with God's word and to be changed. And according to the words of Acts 17, verse 29, the inner person who is reborn with God's word becomes God's offspring. So, the person who is born again of God's word becomes God's offspring and they will enter God's kingdom of heaven. The spiritual light means that the word is life and light. Therefore, the true meaning of spiritual light is the word of God. For this word of God becomes life in men. God explains his word as light and God himself. One who has the word owns the light, but one with no word has no light and life. Only the one who reborn by this word of God can be children of God and enter the kingdom of heaven. Therefore, God's word is the life for people who have hope in heaven. Next, let's understand the true meaning and reality of this light and darkness one by one at the time of the first coming and the second coming. Light is the word of life. Let's take a look at the reality of the light and the darkness at the time of the first coming. As we can see in the words of 1 John 1.5, it says, God is light. Previously, we learned that the word is God and the word of life is the light. So God, who is the origin of word, becomes the light. Therefore, the reality of the figurative light is God. So to whom did God, the origin, the light of life, come down to at the time of the first coming 2,000 years ago? In Matthew 3.16, it says that the Spirit of God descended like a dove upon Jesus. God came down on Jesus and God gave the word of life to Jesus. And as we know that God is light and his word is light, Jesus, who had God, the word of life in him, then became the light of the world. Therefore. Jesus was the only light of life on this earth. That is why Jesus referred to himself as the light of the world while he is in the world in John 8, 12. In the same way as God is the word, which is the origin of life, Jesus who had God and his word of life also becomes the only light of life. Therefore, coming forth to Jesus, is like attaining life and light, and those who leave Jesus are like dwelling in the darkness without life or light. So what did Jesus do with the light of life? It says in John 1, 5, The light shines in the darkness, but the darkness has not understood it. Then that light, who was Jesus, did not refer to a physical light shining in a physical darkness, but his word of life was referred to as a light. Then, when the light shone in the darkness, it doesn't mean the physical darkness, but it refers to the state of ignorance, people without the word of life. It is not the physical darkness, rather it refers to people who do not have the word, therefore being ignorant of God's word. So, Jesus, who is the light, did not shine in physical darkness, but rather testified and preached the word of life to people who were without the word of life. However, the people who belonged to the darkness did not understand. However, those who understood and truly perceived his words came forth to Jesus.
because they came forth to Jesus, they also attained light in their hearts. Therefore, they became the sons of light, since they were born again with the word of life, which became the children of the light. That is why Jesus referred to his disciples as the light of the world in Matthew 5.14. Likewise, those who went to Jesus and heard and truly understood his words also became light. They became the children of light, who were reborn through the light and were able to enter into the eternal kingdom of heaven. Therefore, as God is the light of life, the shepherd, Jesus, who had God's light of life, also became the light of the world. And those who received the word of life through Jesus, Those who were in darkness also became the light. Jesus testified to the darkness and he led them out to light, the word of life. They were able to become the children of heaven since they were able to understand the testimony of Jesus who testified God's word of life. And now, let us examine the reality of light at the second coming and the word of prophecy in the New Testament regarding the light and the darkness. The prophecy of the New Testament regarding the light and the darkness. In 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 1 to 5, It is about the Lord's second coming. Now, brothers, about times and dates we do not need to write for you, for you know very well that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. It says that the Lord will come like a thief in the night. This means that He is not coming in daylight, but at night. Do you think the Lord will really come during a physical night time? Then what does he mean by coming at night? Some believers believe that they should stay up at night praying and wait every night in order to greet the Lord who comes at night. Does he mean that he will return at physical night or spiritual night? In Matthew 24 verses 29 to 31, Jesus explains that there will be signs that the sun, moon and stars of the sky will darken and fall. If the sun, moon, and stars are darkened and fall, the world will be in darkness, a night without light, correct? Jesus says that's when he will return. It is not a physical sun, moon, and stars that will fall, but a spiritual religious world that does not have the truth that will fall, which is figuratively symbolized by the sun, moon, and stars. This means Jesus comes like a thief in the midst of a spiritual religious world where there is no word of truth. So then, Why do you think he will come like a thief in the night? Let us examine the reasons thoroughly. It says that destruction will come upon them suddenly for sons of the night who do not understand. However, do you think that it is the Lord's will to destroy his people or to save his people? That's right. The Lord wants to save his people. If this is true, why then does he say that he will come like a thief at night? Does he mean that he will come like a thief to everyone? The answer is no. Let's read verses 4 and 5. But you, brothers, are not in darkness, so that this day should surprise you like a thief. You are all sons of the light and sons of the day. We do not belong to the night or to the darkness. Yes, it says, you, brothers, are not in darkness, so that this day should surprise you like a thief. And the reason is that you are all sons of light and sons of the day. We do not belong to the night or to the darkness. Thus, it means that he will not come like a thief at night to everyone. For those who are not in the darkness, we can say that they are in the daylight, correct? Then, the Lord will not come to them like a thief. In other words, they are able to know, correct? Not that they will know a time or a particular day, but those who understand the word will be able to prepare because they belong to the light. It says, You brothers are not in darkness, so that this day should not surprise you like a thief. You are all sons of the light and sons of the day. Therefore, the sons of light are able to prepare for the Lord's coming and are able to attain heaven. However, The Lord will come like a thief for those who belong to the night. Thus they cannot prepare, so destruction will come upon them. Believers It is clear that there will be two kinds of believers in the situation of night. There are those who understand that belong to the sons of the day, 
and there are those who do not understand that belong to the sons of the night. What kind of believers should we become? We should certainly become those who belong to the day. A person can know who is coming towards them in the daylight, but they cannot know who is coming towards them in the darkness. Likewise, the sons of the day are able to know because they have the light, but for the sons of the night, because it will be in the midst of the spiritual night, where God's word of truth is absent, they will not know. So let us become those who belong to the day, who can prepare to greet the Lord and attain heaven. Now, let us examine how the sons of the light appear in the midst of the spiritual night and learn about the reality of the light, so we may become the sons of the day. I will now explain the reality of the light and the darkness at the second coming. According to Revelation 10 verses 1 and 2, there is an open scroll that came from heaven. The open scroll refers to something that has been opened and revealed, the revealed word. In Revelation 5, a scroll of God appears, sealed with seven seals, and no one in heaven or on earth or under the earth could open it. It was a sealed scroll. However, Jesus takes the scroll that was in the right hand of God and opens all of the seven seals in Revelation chapters 6 to 8. As God's word becomes open, no longer a sealed book, it becomes the word of truth, which then becomes the light of life. If a once sealed scroll is darkness, then the open scroll becomes the light. It now can illuminate the darkness by testifying the truth. And as we can see in Revelation chapter 10 verses 8 and 11, the revealed word like light was given by God to an angel who was then instructed to feed it to John, the person whom God chose. Then John takes and eats it from the hand of an angel, the word of life. So the open scroll is now in the stomach of John, correct? However, Apostle John saw and received this vision 2,000 years ago. It is important to remember this as the prophecy that would be fulfilled in the future. If this prophecy is being fulfilled, then wouldn't there be an actual reality of the one who comes in the position of John? So then, the reality will not be Apostle John who existed 2,000 years ago, but it will be a new person who fulfills the task of John. And because he received and ate the revealed word, this person has the true word of God. The reason why it is expressed as ate it is because the word of God is like food that gives life. This pastor who received the word of life becomes God's chosen pastor who received the word of God. Then the pastor, like Apostle John, who ate the revealed word, the word of life, what would he become? He will also be the light of the world, a person who received the light, God's word of life. God also commands him in verse 11 to prophesy again to many people, nations, languages and kings. The word of prophecy is revealed and commanded to prophesy again to all the people, nations, languages and kings. So shouldn't all people who belong to darkness come and learn from this pastor, who is the light, in order to become the family of God? So, as indicated in verse 11, the chosen pastor who ate the open scroll must testify to the people who are in the spiritual night. It would be the word of light which gives life that would be preached to these people. And those who are in darkness, those who come forth to the shepherd who ate the open scroll and truly understand, would become the sons of light, the sons of God belonging to heaven, since they are reborn of God's revealed word. By receiving the word of light, the revealed word, they become the children of God. This enables them to be the believers who can greet Jesus and enter into eternal heaven. Believers who have hope in heaven, then today, how shall we become the sons of the day and become part of God's family? The night that the Lord is talking about does not refer to the physical night, but to a spiritual night of the religious world that does not know God's word of truth. Then the chosen pastor who eats the open scroll, the revealed word, like in Revelation chapter 10, is the light of the world, and the revealed word of truth is the light. Therefore, those who come forward and understand this word will also become the light coming out of the darkness. So, I hope that we are all qualified as the sons of light 
coming out of the darkness, so we can attain heaven and prepare for the Lord's return. Now, we will finish today's lesson by concluding with a summary. The light is God and the word of life, and the darkness is not having God's word, which leads to being ignorant of God and his word. God compared himself and his word of life to light. Just as people cannot live without light, God desires us to understand that we cannot survive without God's word. Therefore, the word says that God and God's word is light. Believers who have hope in heaven, since God expressed that we cannot survive without light, let us seek and understand the word of life, the word of light in order to live. In this way, we can become God's family who attain life and become the children of light who receive the promised blessings of heaven. This I pray in the name of the Lord. Next time, we will learn Introductory Lesson 12, Figurative Lampstand, The Blind and the Deaf. Thank you. If one does not know the secrets of heaven, the parables, he will not be forgiven and will become a person on the outside. This era is not the era of speaking figuratively, but the era of knowing plainly. This is the time of harvest. Those who are harvested are the sons of the kingdom of heaven. Those who are not harvested and who remain in their churches are the sons of the devil. Let us become those who are saved by believing according to what is promised.